Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm doing my best to look like uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch today. My Vortex hat, my Demo Ranch shirt. In any case, I'm going to be doing some muzzle brake testing again. This time I've got uh, four different muzzle brakes to test and also bare muzzle. This is to really look at the one that I got from Vendetta Precision and see how it stacks up against some of the competitors. So with no further ado, basically the test is going to run like this. I'm going to fire one round each with each one of these. That way the bolt holds, holds open every single time. So any kind of muzzle rise because of bolt reciprocation and locking back is going to be the same across the board. And I've got, of course, my one inch grid here with a slow motion, best I can do, 240 frames a second. And we're going to look at how much the muzzle devices mitigate muzzle rise as well as uh, recoil impulse. So with no further ado, we're just going to get started. We're going to go with a baseline. We're going to go with the bare muzzle here. So this is bare muzzle out of an 18 inch mid-length gas system, uh, adjustable gas block, and a lightweight bolt And from AIM Surplus, in case you guys are wondering. Got my red dot on, and let's see how it works here. All right, so there's our baseline. That will give us something to work off of as we start looking at the rest of these muzzle devices. So let me go ahead and put the A2 bird cage on next, and then we'll come back. All right, so now we've got the A2 bird cage on. Now, the way this uh, muzzle device works is you have a crush washer and that helps proper tuning and timing for your muzzle device. Now as you can see here I can rotate this freely. In order to get this time properly I'd have to crush every single crush washer so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it out and I'm gonna time it by hand and because we're only firing one round we still should get the same effect out of it. Alright so let's go ahead and do the A2 bird cage In slow mo. Get that off the table. All right. Here we go. So there was the A2 bird cage, and we'll see how that stacks up against our baseline. So let me go ahead and cut here real quick and put the next muzzle device on. So the next muzzle device we have to test is the F&A Compensator from Ares Armor. And it comes in a cool little pill bottle and it's got some funny anecdotes in this on the sheet that talks about prescription and stuff like that. But I'll read this when we get back to the workbench. For now, let's get our slow motion footage of this compensator working. Again, again same setup, slow motion camera, nothing has changed, nothing has moved. We've got proper timing on this. Now, it's gonna sound strange, but I can feel the difference in that. This is a tunable muzzle device. So basically what that means is, it's got a bunch of holes all the way around it. And if you want to mitigate muzzle rise, let's say you're a right-handed shooter, most muzzle rise is gonna come up and to the right after your shot. To mitigate that, you simply put some screws in the bottom left side, which causes more gases to go up and out to the right, which help bring that muzzle back down for quicker follow-up shots. I can feel the tunability of this. I've already tuned it, I've run it before, so it's still tuned to the way that I like it for this ammo and for my shoulder. I can already feel the difference, but the slow motion will tell the footage. All right, let's move on to our next muzzle device. All right, so our next muzzle device is a single chamber taper mount brink from Griffin Armament. Why Griffin Armament? Well, I have a suppressor that is just waiting for government clearance and once I get that, it will directly thread onto this taper mount. 
and will thus be able to suppress uh, 556. So this is just a single chamber taper mount. They do make, they just came out with their two chamber ones and I'm interested to see the two chamber versus the one chamber. But for now, we've got the one chamber, we've got it timed properly on this gun. So let's go ahead and put our one round through. Here we go. You can probably see that that did <laughs> a pretty good job at doing what muzzle brakes are designed to do, and that is to divert the gases outwards to the side and basically pull the rifle back forward, which helps mitigate some of that recoil. How do you know it worked? Our grid is gone. So let's go ahead and set that grid back up, get our next muzzle device on, and try again. All right, so our next and last muzzle device that we have to test here today is the Vendetta Precision Interceptor. This is the one that kind of sparked the, uh, the desire to come out and do something like this. So I'm very curious to see how this brake, which is a two chamber brake, remember the last one was a one chamber brake, it's two chambers and it's got three ports on top. So in theory, this design should help mitigate felt recoil into the shoulder and with those ports on top, it should help keep our muzzle down for faster follow-up shots. The trouble that you get into sometimes, and we'll find out if it happens with this, if you put too many ports on top, every time you pull the trigger, it'll actually go down. Every time you pull the trigger, instead of recoiling up, it'll recoil down because of those gases. So the real question is, did Vendetta Precision, with their interceptor model, do a good job of putting just enough ports on top to mitigate recoil, but not too many to create a downward recoil? So let's go ahead and find out with our slow motion. I have a feeling we're going to lose this thing again. So let's see here. Here we go. Well, as you notice, first things first, we didn't really lose that. And I can tell you from a feel standpoint, it really did feel like much less recoil. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to load back up. I'm going to put two rounds in this magazine and I'm going to see if I can keep, I got a bowling pin I've been shooting at. I'm going to see if I can keep both rounds on that bowling pin. So stay with me. All right, two rounds loaded up. We're going to see if we can put both onto that bowling pin in rapid succession. And we've got the slow-mo still running here. And that way we can see exactly what that muzzle is doing under rapid fire. So let's take a look. All right, here we go. So as you can see from the slow motion video on the bare muzzle, the recoil is two inches back and two inches up. Um, this shows that without any kind of muzzle device, the recoil impulse, while not strong, is still very pronounced. With the A2 birdcage on here, what you'll notice is that the recoil goes from two inches rearward to only about an inch rearward, but the part that really you should look at is the upward motion of the muzzle, which is very minimal. I mean, we're talking maybe an inch. So that upward gas is helping keep that muzzle down. With the FNA compensator, you're going to watch this recoil impulse go a half inch back, and because of its tuning, does not rise at all. In fact, it shoots completely flat. The center of the muzzle stays on that one line about the whole recoil. Our next is the Griffin Armament single chamber brake, and what you'll notice here is that there's still plenty of upward trajectory to this muzzle after the shot's fired. But because the blast is so great coming out the side of that chamber, there really isn't much recoil to the shoulder. So most of the muzzle movement is vertical and less so coming back at you. Total movement for the Griffin is 1 inch rearward and 2 inches vertical. With the Vendetta Precision Interceptor, it does a very good job mitigating felt recoil in the shoulder, which is the rearward movement here you're seeing that's about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. 
It of course controls muzzle rise as well, but you'll notice while it doesn't have an upward movement when the shot is fired, it has a slight downward movement when the shot is fired, about a quarter of an inch. So some final thoughts. Bare muzzle, again, while 223 doesn't have that much of a recoil impulse to the shoulder, but what you get a lot of is muzzle climb. With the A2 birdcage, it does a fantastic job of helping to reduce that muzzle climb significantly while also not creating too much of a muzzle blast to, for your neighbors. The FNA compensator does a fantastic job when tuned properly of controlling any kind of muzzle movement, whether it be horizontal or vertical. The only muzzle movement you're going to get is rearward into your shoulder. The Griffin Armament Single Chamber Taper Brake. That is a great little device, but I wouldn't necessarily use it if I were just looking for a muzzle device. The reason I'm choosing to use it is because it's able to accept the suppressor. The Vendetta Precision Brake is a great brake. It's a great option. I would recommend, however, if you're going to use the Vendetta Precision Interceptor, just be aware that there might be a slight downward recoil. So the four muzzle devices that I tested, the A2, the FNA, the Griffin and the Vendetta Precision are all great devices and I would recommend every single one of them, but each has its own application. Just know what your application, what you're going to use the gun for first before you start accessorizing it with muscle devices. As always, thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you again very soon.